Side-fired bottles. I have made a few of these over the last couple years, um, but especially in my last firing, I had probably eight or nine of these small wood-fired, uh, side-fired bottles. And this one especially is my favorite because this one I'm keeping, number one, because it uh, looked, it turned out the best, uh, but also is a memory of my family vacation because the seashells that I used on this one when it was in the kiln, laying on its side like this, the seashells, me and my family picked up on our family vacation this last summer. And so it's not only a memory, but it's a cool piece of artwork. Or it's not only a cool piece of artwork, but it's also a memory, which is more important to me than a cool piece of artwork. I love this bottle, and I thought, you know what? Today, I'm going to make wood firing uh, piece number one for wood firing number nine be a side-fired bottle, probably two, two and a half pounds, so a little bit larger than that one. Um, but I'm going to make several of these for this firing because I just love the way they turned out in this last firing. And so, yeah, that's what we're doing today. Let's go. To start with, anytime I'm throwing anything taller, I try to take uh, extra care to center the clay ball really well. Uh, that's something that really you should do for everything you throw, but there are some things, uh, especially with my production pottery background, that you learn uh, that you don't have to center it quite as well and you can still make a decent piece. Uh, but with these bottles being tall and skinny, it's much better to get the clay really well centered uh, and then take take your time. I, I try to really take my time as I do every step in the process to not knock it off center and to pull evenly uh, all those kinds of things that really help the rest of the process go well. My pulls for just about everything that I make are very similar. A lot of my first pulls are done with my thumb, as you saw, where I kind of cone it in towards the center. And then the rest of the pulls are done if it's something tall. Um, if it's usually under three to four pounds, I pull mostly with my tips of my fingers on my right hand, uh, with the sponge uh, inside my hand to keep the clay moist. Uh, I'm not actually pushing with the sponge, I'm pushing with the tip of my finger and the sponge just happens to be in my hand to help keep the clay moist as I'm pulling. Uh, and as it gets, as I, uh, if I throw larger items, I pull with my knuckle initially, the, the uh, knuckle on my uh, pointer finger, index finger on my right hand. Uh, but if I throw smaller items or even later pulls with a larger item, I do with my fingertip. And it just helps me get a little bit more control and pinch just a little bit farther down at the bottom and grab a little bit more clay. Uh, or just more precisely pull uh, the clay uh, by using my fingertips. I started noticing on this one here that the that it was getting a little wider than I wanted it at the top. So at this point, I decided to add some water to the outside and, and cone it in a bit at the top because I wanted to do uh, one more pull and I thought I needed to make sure the top stayed in a little bit so that I, as I did this last pull, it didn't get considerably wider. Uh, these bottles really uh, for making a flounder bottle, which is what I do later as I flatten two sides of it The bottle has to stay fairly skinny or the cylinder has to stay fairly skinny so that as I make the bottle It doesn't get too wide if you make too wide of a, a vase or a bottle Then when you go to flatten it it flattens out and gets even more wide It, it can get really distorted looking and, and, and have less chance of success as well so I try to make some pretty skinny shapes uh, while making these uh, uh, side-fired bottles. For this bottle, I'm pushing in at the base and then back out for the belly. Uh, a little bit different than the bottle that I showed you at the beginning of the video, uh, but just to make a different style, I've made them this way, and I've, I've made them the style of the video, uh, the one I showed you at the beginning of the video. I like them both, um, but uh, I was actually sitting and eat, eating breakfast this morning or making my coffee, drinking my coffee this morning, and I saw a bottle that's similar to the shape that I'm making here, one that I have in my kitchen that I kept uh, before I even finished building my wood kiln. It was fired in my friend Joseph's wood kiln, 
uh, and it was probably one of my favorite side-fired bottles I've ever made and it's sitting uh, in my kitchen and so uh, that definitely inspired me this morning to come out and, and make this style bottle and also even make this video uh, and make my first piece for wood fire number nine uh, with uh, as a side-fired bottle. So now as you can tell, I'm just pinching in the top to uh, make a skinnier neck on the top and it's got a little bit of a wobble to it and I'm trying to work with that and, and uh, pay attention to that shoulder there so that I don't get too drastic of a, uh, a curve on that shoulder or, or pull in too much and make a weak point. Uh, and so I, I pay attention a lot to that shoulder and the curve of the bottle as well as the top. And so as I, as I pinch in, and pull up also you know getting some of that unevenness to the top uh, have uh, it's the second time here having to cut off the top uh, but that's no problem I, I don't mind doing that it's uh, it doesn't always happen but it happens more times than it doesn't um, but uh, just getting enough water up there as I said in a couple videos ago where I talked about how to cut off the the top of a piece having enough moisture having enough water up there to push that needle tool through is, is a big help as you can see here, I'm going back, cleaning excess water off the outside, making sure that shoulder is nice and rounded the way I want, adding water back just to where I want to pinch in, and pinching in and pulling up at the same time. Like I said, it's it's kind of revealing some more of that unevenness, but and then here I'm going to pull a little bit and shape as I'm pulling, and then probably come back here and cut off the top again one last time. And just one more time to go over that curve with my rib and then uh, put a little foot on the bottom. I just add a little bit of water and then kind of push in the rib and lift up some of that excess clay that's at the bottom there and curve it with my fingers on my other hand. And then just wipe off the excess water off the whole piece. And we're just about done. All right, well, there we go. There is a uh, side-fired bottle. Well, not yet. It's a bottle. Uh, and I will, uh, in the next uh, next video or two that I make here, I will show after this stiffens up how I flatten the bottle. And uh, we'll go through the process. But there is wood fired, uh, pot number one for wood firing number nine. And uh, excited about uh, this journey still. It's, uh, it never gets old because I'm trying new things all the time and uh it's uh wood firing gives you endless possibility well any pottery in general any art form gives you endless possibilities uh but i'm excited about where things are going and uh what we've accomplished so far so uh excited about that and we'll see you guys in the next video all right thanks <laughs>